Excellent. Thank you for um, reaching out. I'm happy to answer whatever questions you have today. So let me know. Yeah, I'm very happy to be with you and you're amazing. I admire you, honestly. Thank you. So I have a few questions and one of them was about this program. I emailed you the first time. I was wondering how it was for you and this course you had to took before um, starting the program. Yeah, so um, you're asking like, sort of about my quantitative skills before starting my PhD, essentially. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I basically had all bare, not even basic. It was like worse than basic statistics skill. I don't know how I passed my, I barely passed my quantitative class and my master's. And then I, um, you know, go to Harvard and then they're like, yeah, you, your first year, you have a year long statistics course and it's everyone's nightmare and I'm like and if you don't pass you have to retake it I was like oh my gosh this sounds so intense um so I did make it through that course and it was really difficult but then I started actually applying what I was learning in that class to like real world pro like actual projects and not just like homework assignments and that's what started making everything click for me in my brain. And I now can proudly say that I know how to use R enough to like clearly publish some manuscripts and papers. And I would say I'm a little, at least more than basic now. And I'm really quite proud of like what I've been able to accomplish in the past four years in terms of going from, you know, absolutely almost failing my quantitative class to, oh, wow, I can actually like maybe show wow. someone else how to do something in R. So um, it's, yeah. um, you definitely learn a lot, not just in the coursework of your doctoral program, but also um, the just projects, the real actual research projects that you start to work on and um, the mentorship that you get when you work on those projects that are not homework assignments. Yeah. But I was searching too because there is an MPH program about also like the health and yeah. So most places, most PhD programs actually require you to have a master's in order to be considered for their PhD program. So I would definitely say that it definitely helps your application to have the master's degree, but that's to say like there are people with just bachelors who get into the program. It's definitely less common though than people who have masters already. So, you know, that's a decision you're going to have to make because um, master's programs cost a lot of money. So that's something that you're going to, and time, well, yeah, the money and the time. So if, if, is that something that you have the resources to invest in before embarking on the PhD? how do I phrase this? You're not less competitive because you have only a bachelor's and no master's, but that is something that they're going to notice when you apply. Like, oh, this person doesn't have a master's, whereas this person does. And you do learn a, quite a bit in a master's program that elevates your knowledge beyond what you have as just having a bachelor's. I see, because there was this MPH program and it's about a year and a half. One of the requirements of the program says a bachelor's degree plus two or more year of full-time work experience in, a, in an area relevant to public health. And these years I will be uh, working at school and yeah. I maybe, in, yeah, maybe it helps. This is not two years, but it's a year and maybe helps. And I don't know, what do you say? Yeah. Definitely is. Fun. Yeah. I think working in a school and getting that experience definitely counts. Um, and I think the okay. two years is also another recommendation, not necessarily like you have to have that or else they won't look at your application. So yeah, That's I, don't know, I would recommend yeah, doing the master's first. That's what I did, you know, and it was a time and money commitment, but it was obviously worth it for me in the end. Like, I don't think I would be where I'm at if I didn't do the master's first. I mean, I was coming from zero public health research 
um, experience. So um, I needed the masters for sure. I saw another one of your videos and you were like, what do I do? And all this kind of thing. And, and maybe it's an opportunity to me to start learning about this and getting involved in this field. And I wanted to know your experience about this and what is one of your highlights about this journey and public health more specifically, because yeah, maybe the program is different, but in general, overall yeah. it's public health. That's a great question. Well, let me explain quickly my journeys to you. So I studied public health as an undergraduate um, student at UC Berkeley. Um, I was also a psychology double major. Um, but at that time, I wasn't really taking like academics very seriously, but I did love teaching. Um, I, ta I taught a public health course at UC Berkeley, and that's what really got me like falling in love with public health. But again, didn't take academics too seriously. So graduated, worked for two years. I talk about this a lot. They were completely irrelevant to public health. Um, I was doing like sales, recruiting, marketing, whatever, all that type of corporate type stuff, um, more businessy. And I didn't like it or I liked it, but I didn't love it. I was, I didn't wake up excited to go to work. And that was something that really bothered me. And I was like, okay, I need to go back and get my master's and get that public health degree that I thought I wanted at one point. Um, so I, you know, Matt studied for the GRE, powered through that, powered through the applications, got into Yale for my master's in public health and was like, okay, I'm ready for a big change. I'm going to move to the other side of the country and then go finally pursue my dreams. Um, it was, you know, a big step for me. Um, and at that time, I still didn't really know what I wanted to do. I was like, sort of like, yeah, I'm interested in like young adult risk, you know, behavior prevention, you know, just because I was recently a young adult doing a lot of risky behaviors, maybe I should prevent some of those to help population health. I don't know. Um, and then I went um, and found this wonderful summer internship that was research focused at Stanford with my now current mentor, um, who really brought me into the, re the, the field of like adolescent substance use prevention, why it's important to intervene early and do so in a school-based setting. And I've kind of carried that through. Um, and I remember having a conversation with my mentor and she looked at me, she's like, what do you want to do for your long-term career? And I was like, well, I want to teach. I want to be a professor. I want to be like you. And she was like, yeah, an MPH isn't going to cut it. You're going to need that PhD. And I was like, oh, I knew you were going to say that. So then I went back, applied to PhD programs. But I think going back to like why that master's experience was so key and important for me is that it bridged that gap between the like, like when I was making those sales and recruiting calls, like I never thought I was going to get a PhD in public health. Like, like so I, you know, had to make a huge transition and the masters really helped me like figure out what I wanted to do, figured out that I love public health. Re I hated research as an undergrad, but that's because I was doing data entry. And then when I was actually using my brain and doing really exciting research, um, you know, about the adolescent vaping epidemic, it was so great. And then, you know, that just kept domino affecting into, you know, now where I am. So yeah, that's sort of my story. And I would say that the master's is a great time to explore and find out what you want to do, because I went from not knowing at all to applying to a PhD program. So yeah, thank you for sharing your story. Yeah, of and course. It, it's very helpful to me and it helps me to think about what, what I can do and what can I do in my future. And I'm, I'll share you some of the things I want to do, uh, things, and I think this kind of health and public health, it would help me to reach those things. And I want to know your opinion about my goal and if this is going to be helpful to reach those things and more open doors to me. A hundred percent. And I think that's what a master's can really do too is it helps you open those doors. It helps you make those connections. It, you know, when you join a master's program, you have that alumni network and all those people have those connections. And there are career counselors that are going to help you find internships. And like, you have tons of support that are going to be able to give you those connections, teach you how to network. 
um, you know, so that you can build those connections that will eventually reach your dream. And I would, you talk about your dream, like it's something that's totally unattainable. I think it's, I totally think that if you set your mind to it and, you know, you take the next steps in your career path, like you can totally eventually, like I, like, I know I had friends who were like doing summer internships at the WHO as a master's student, you know, like, I think anything is possible. I keep like, you know, if you told me eight years ago that I was going to get a PhD from Harvard, I would have just like started laughing. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's really your, that's no, like, but this is where I am now, you know? And, um, I think anything is possible if you put your mind to it, you work hard and you believe in yourself and you just try, you know, and you do your best. Like, that's what I've always kind of come back to is you don't need to be perfect. It's not, everything's going to work out perfectly, but you can achieve your dreams despite that. So, yeah. Oh, thank you so, so much. Honestly, everything you are saying is so good for me to hear. And I also believe that if I work hard and I keep persisting on these dreams are 100% attainable and I am like learning and doing all this research watching videos your videos are amazing so thank you for posting yep. them because I'm really thankful like you speak so clearly and it's really helpful to me and I do want I want to do a lot of things and I try to involve and to learn and to grow in every sense that I can. And also when I was reading about you in your bio, it was like, this is all that I want to do. Honestly, this is the things that I want to reach. So the, when I say this to you, it's honest 100%. And thank you for taking your time. And you I you inspire me honestly <laughs> thank oh you. thank you wow this is so heartwarming I'm supposed to be the one pumping you up not the other way around no I have to say your passion is definitely there um so I I you know it part of it is yes me putting out the materials but like you said you going out and finding it too and finding it useful and then applying it to your life and it sounds like you're doing that and more and you're taking the initiative and, um, you know, it's a scary process. Like, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty that I'm still facing, you know, and it's hard and, you know, it's good that you, um, are staying positive and you acknowledge that, you know, you're working hard and you just, you do your best and it sounds like you're gaining really good experience right now and just keep moving forward. 